Shafila was murdered by her mother and father in front of her siblings. Uh, a vile murder, as we, we talked at the time, but she was murdered because she didn't conform. She was murdered because they had this misconception about trying to bring in their old life in Pakistan into that house in Cheshire. So clear links from the beginning there that Shafilia was to be controlled and be controlled because they believed, and it's important it was what they believed as the, as the parents, that she was bringing shame on the family. Once you understand that, you realise that's a big motivating factor. But at the end of the day, it's a domestic abuse situation, a murder in a domestic environment, aggravated by this so-called honour that sort of runs so deep in that family. The 14th of July, which has been um, stated of uh, Chifili Ahmed's birthday due to the death, and, and also to, to remember her on that day, but to remember all the others, men and women, who's being killed in, uh, under the so-called honour. Um, it's really important to, to, to kind of campaign and, high, um, and raise an awareness about the issues of honour-based abuse within the UK and that we, we don't uh, stand for such abuse in this, in this country. 14th of July is, is an important landmark in itself, but people understand now um, the issues are still there but the awareness of particularly frontline staff is much higher. But the journey over the sort of next 15 years is about raising awareness, but also now about when you get a report, what to do. So people are starting to be far more savvy around managing the threat and reacting to the threat because it's a very real one. Our staff are trained and educated now in recognising honour-based abuse and forced marriage. We have um, specialist units are... Um, protecting Vulnerable Persons Unit, who specialise in protecting and dealing with vulnerable persons. Uh, so their priority is the safeguarding of vulnerable people. Um, we also have, we work closely with our partner agencies, so both statutory and voluntary organisations such as social services, education. We also work with agencies such as Severe UK. Um, so all these agencies together work together to try and safeguard victims who come forward. In addition to that, we have legislation that can assist us. So we have forced marriage protection orders. Um, but the key for us is that we are victim-led. So our priority is safeguarding, safeguarding the victim, safeguarding vulnerable people. It's really important uh, for charitable organisations like the likes of Severe to work with the police, to work with all the local authorities and services, because when someone comes to us, um, or you know, and it's an emergency. So they come to us and phone us and say, "I'm, I, I am uh, at risk, and if nobody comes now, I'll be dead." So then, you know, that's where we will contact the police. So the, the police does their kind of um, policing um, work um, around kind of protecting the the, cli uh, the client or the individual, and then Severa pro uh, provide the support. So the partnership working with the police and other organisation, it's it's vital, it's really important to ensure the, the safety of those individuals because when we talk about abu uh, uh, on a based abuse, it's not one perpetrator, there's a multiple uh, perpetrator and we need to work together to ensure that all the safety measures are in place and the police, and the police play a huge part within that. The big thing about victims of honour-based abuse is they feel very, very isolated. So uh, they don't know who to turn to, they can't turn to their family, they find it very, very difficult to turn to friends. So it's really, really difficult for them. Often the only solution they see is to run away from the situation. What I would say to them is, is, is you need to link in with the police, uh, with any of the voluntary organisations such as Severa, you can link in with social services. Um, there's the Forced Marriage Unit which is based down in London which again offers help and can assist protect people. So there's lots of organisations now that victims can link into. So what I would say is don't suffer in silence, pick up that phone and ring us. Such abuse is not um, acceptable. It's against the law within this country. It's, um, it's no, there is no acceptance through religion, through belief. These are harmful cultural tradition that we need to tackle. 
um, and we need to kind of show that if at any time that they feel that they are a victim or under threat of such abuse, like unbased abuse, like female genital mutilation, like forced marriage, or any control that they feel that is stop them to achieve their goals, stop them to have their own choices and freedom, then there is help to, for them um, nation, locally and nationally, and they will, you know, to seek help uh, and support.